Hey guys, it's Kelly. I'm here today to share with you my first tutorial. Yay! Well, my first tutorial for YouTube anyways. Um, like I had mentioned in the first uh, video, I will be doing a tutorial on my blog as well as this video. So if you guys need some written down instructions, then you can go over there and look me up and look them up. I will have the link in the down bar. Um, but yeah, this tutorial is going to be how to make your own pressing board. Now, the reason that I say pressing board is because you don't really want to use a uh, ironing board and ironing boards are not really made for sewing and quilting because it has too much give. So whenever you're trying to press, because in quilting you press instead of iron, you don't want to rub that back and forth because that'll warp your fabric and, um, the give of the ironing board will also warp your fabric or can warp, warp your fabric if that's all you got though that's all you got use what you got definitely but this is a relatively inexp inexpensive project and it's super quick and easy trust me if i can do it you can do it <laughs> trust me but here's the finished product i don't know if you can really see it that well let me lean back some But, um, I do have a list of materials needed, um, that will be coming when the video starts. But really all it is is plywood, just a piece of plywood, um, 100% cotton batting, and I use duck canvas in this one. But here is my old one that I've had for about two years. This one's a little bit lighter weight than that one right there but um with this one I did quilting cotton and I would not recommend that now um just I just wouldn't recommend it honestly it wears out over time and it's just not as sturdy as the a home decor weight or or duck or canvas fabric would be now with this one instead of using batting I don't know if you yeah you can see the red this is an old towel that I had um, that I had used for this and you can still do that this is still very very usable I think I'm actually going to give it to my mom because she needs a pressing board rather than her ironing board but really use your imagination you can use it the same way as I show you in this video with the um, batting or what I did on this one was I just kind of made it like a sleeve for the plywood to stick down into so I just sewed it up on I folded it in half sewed it up on either side and there we went really really super easy super quick I promise um but yeah if you guys want to learn how to make an ironing board or pressing board rather go then don't just forget stay tuned. to like this video subscribe leave me comments down below to let me know what you would like to see next anything that you're interested in learning about when it comes to the crafting sewing quilting whatever um i'm really excited to hear from you guys and i will talk to you soon bye okay so here's what you need you need a piece of plywood um it can be any size you want to suit whatever space that you have mine is about three-fourths of an inch by thick by about 25 by 25 square you will also need a piece of 100% cotton batting right here that I cut around three inches larger on each side. It need it can be a little bit bigger than that, but it needs to at least be three inches wider on all sides. Then I have a piece of duck cloth or canvas um, cut a little bit larger than the batting. You can use home decor weight fabric or duck as long as it's not a little bit thicker than quilting weight. And then you will need an electric stapler. I have two different types here. This one plugs in and it's easier for me to use. So that's one that I'm going to be using. But if you just have something like this, you can use it. You can get these at your local hardware store. And I'm pretty sure some craft stores sell it as well. All right, let's get going to step one. Okay, so our first step is to lay out as evenly and flat as you possibly can. Your canvas needs to be going first, and if it's a print, uh, make sure the wrong side is facing up. And then your cotton batting, and then layer your plywood 
center it as best as you possibly can. And then our first step, all we're going to do is bring one side, doesn't matter which side you start with, over and get it as taut as you can. You don't want it too tight, but you do want it taut. All right. And we're going to place a few staples. Just like that. Well, you don't want to get too close to the corners here. Okay, now we're going to do that all the way around the whole thing, leaving the corners for very last. And I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, I've zoomed in here to show you how I chose to do my corners. When I went to fold it like this, I was thinking about mitering it. It was just way too much bulk. And I want this to sit as flat as it possibly can. So I don't want all this bulk in the corners and it to be, you know, like wobbly or anything. So what I decided to do was to cut out a little square. And you can most certainly do this before. I probably recommend you doing it before. Um, it just varies what size your square will be from where I didn't cut mine before. I'll show you the sizes of my other squares that I have cut though. Let's see here. Here is from one corner. It measures about, I'd say four inches by, well around four by four or five by five, just depending. And this one's more rectangular. And like I said, they're not all even because from where I'm cutting them on the board, which I will show you how to cut them on the board. If you give me just one sec. All right, so what I've done, you see, it will be sticking up like this whenever you're done with all the sides. You fold out whichever side you wanna start with, it doesn't matter. You fold it out to where it's flat, okay? Then I went about to where I couldn't get any closer to the edge, and I just cut the first slit down and then pulled it up and cut down almost, I don't know if you can see that, almost to the board, okay? And then I pulled it straight again, or up rather tight, and start cutting this way. And I will cut this off. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Nobody's going to see this but you and me if you decide to show me a picture of it. But... There's that. So then what you'll want to do is take your shortest side and lay it down flat and then fold it over and see if it's okay. And like, it's okay if it hangs over just a little bit. Um, I'll show you this one over here. Let me zoom out some. I don't know if you can see it because of my arm. Okay, you see how this is hanging over? Maybe like a, I don't know, half an inch. That's Okay, it doesn't matter. Ignore that mess over there, please. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's just whatever you want. Okay, so I scooted all this stuff back. Let me scoot it back up. And zoom in some. So I'm going to show you again. After I cut that rectangular square piece out, I just left this piece flat. And remember, we pulled it taut, so it's going to want to go over anyways. And I pulled this over. Now, if you have a little bit of excess right here in the corner, that's okay. You can just fold it down, which I actually did to one of these corners over here. But you can just fold it down and then fold over. Okay? So we're going to do that. And then we're going to put a few staples in here. You want to staple to where all, all fabric layers are going to be stapled through. So all four layers. One right there. One right there, and then I don't want this coming loose, so I'm going to put one right there. And as you can see, it is completely done. There is not much to it at all. So here's the back. And now here's the front. And I've got me a hard surface for pressing, and no, it's not perfectly, like, stretched. And that's okay, because I didn't want to overstretch any of my stuff, or any of my fabrics. But, there you go. It's super, super simple. It took me maybe a total of 20 minutes. And that's including stopping and talking to you guys and explaining to you how to do it. 
and stopping the video to take pictures for my tutorial on my blog. So it's really, really super simple and I hope you guys enjoy it. Leave me any comments below with any ideas for future videos and I will see you guys later. Bye!